Hey, so welcome back, and this is another daily code problem. So today it was actually a dynamic programming problem. It's called minimum path sum. Oh, I don't want to spoil it. And so this is actually a very popular question. Um, it's, it has over 10,000 likes, and it's asked by Google. So it's kind of very famous. I think uh, Neatcode has done it. Um, and like Nick White and a lot of the kind of bigger YouTubers. So it's great kind of famous, typical kind of coding question, I guess. So it's great practice. I did it um, six months ago, but I was able to actually get this one. Um, but yeah, so basically what you're given is a 2D array and you want to see what the kind of shortest path is. And so here you can see it's M by N, which should mean, okay, the number of rows and number of columns might not always match. They give an example here where there's only two rows, but three columns. And so you are also given non-negative, so they're all gonna be positive. And basically you just want to start from this top left-hand corner and find a path all the way down to this right hand corner but you want to take the path where you have the minimum sum and so if we look at this case what you do is okay you have one and three so now we're at four five six then seven and so and if you did any other path all from this top row down to this bottom right row or call or sell this just happens to be the kind of minimum sum path and so what you should kind of view this as is okay you start with one here and you can either go right or you can go down that's what you can always do yeah you can either only go down or right at any point in time and so you can say okay I have one here so if I go right I'll have four if I go down, I'll have two. And then from there, if we keep going, if I go right, I'll have five of my running sum. You can't take anything up here because this is like not available. So you always, you can only go right. And then here at five, you can get here by either going down from four or going right from two. And so naturally we'll want to take this path because two is less than four. And so this will be seven. And so here, which one would we want to choose? You'd want to go from here down. So let's grab five instead of seven. So this would be six. From here, it would be six. From here, you would pick six over seven. So it's eight. And then at this point, because six is less than eight, you grab this six, and that will get you seven. So basically, I think in only just these squares here, you can either pick from the left or from above. Same with here, you can either pick seven or five, you pick six or seven, or eight and six here for this cell. And so this is when you kind of have choices of, okay, we want to optimize and pick which path, either the one, on the left of us or the one above us would kind of give us the minimum sum. So these, you should kind of view this, especially when doing dynamic programming, all like solving all these sub problems. And these are the sub problems that we're doing of, okay, I can either look at this cell and this cell. When I'm doing this one, I can either look at this cell or this cell. But when I'm at, you know, this cell, I can only look at the one to the left because this one's not available. All right, and so, that's what we're literally going to do. Um, I find this one, you can kind of come up with the algorithmic solution fairly naturally. And so, and the code kind of is fairly easy to formulate that relationship because you just, you know, you, you would have two for loops and you're constantly checking kind of the previous and the above uh, rows and columns. So yeah, let's take a look and give this a try. So. What we'll do is we're given this grid here and this represents our graph and we want to say, okay, we don't want to kind of update this grid in place because that's typically bad practice and you can get away with it during a kind of uh, a 
um, coding competition, but generally speaking, you want to just modify an existing um, cell or array that you made yourself and not kind of modify the input that's given to you. So, and this is kind of templated code, like typically for um, these dynamic programming problems, you want to make like a DP array. And so we'll make a, a two dimensional um, dynamic programming array. And so we'll want to say, okay, we're going to make it so that it is infinite initially for every cell. And so I'll explain that in a sec, but let's just make it out. So we want this kind of infinity for every value in every cell. And so we'll need the number of rows and the number of columns. I like to use R and C. Great, and so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply it. So we're gonna have infinite for every column. And then we want this for uh, our rows for in range rows. Great, and so the reason why we wanna do infinite is we're actually going to add kind of a almost barrier around these cells like this. And so we'll have a cell here that's infinite, another cell here, and another cell here. These will all be kind of infinity. And same with kind of right here, you'd have infinity on this cell. Don't have much room here, but um, here and here are both kind of infinity. And so the reason why you want to do that is, say you're at this cell, when you're picking kind of, do I want to go from the left or the one above, because this will be infinity, you're always going to grab value to the left of you. That way we don't really have to deal as much with the bounds of, okay, I don't want to kind of throw an exception by indexing into the cell that's above me that doesn't exist. So we're just going to add kind of a additional um, layer of catching so that you don't have to worry about it and kind of handle every case the same way and generically rather than having to deal with these edge cases. Plus our bounds will be the same, like we're not going to have any really increased time or space complexity because it will scale just as well. Um, so yeah, so what we're going to do is we'll want to iterate for every row in our grid and for every column. And so one thing that I didn't mention I should do here is that we'll want to add one. And so that way we have actually that extra layer because right now the number of rows and columns is the size of this kind of three dimensional or a three by three grid, but we'll want a, a four by four for this case. So we just add one here and we add one here. And so naturally we're going to want to do the same in this case. And what we're going to do is we want to start at index uh, one by one. And so that's going to be, okay, right now this is actually four dimensional, right? And so it's like this, there's one here, there's one here, a cell here, and then one more here. And so we're going to want to start at this position. Right, And so we don't want to start at any of these infinities because that's useless and we're not going to consider that in our path. And so we want to start at our kind of one, the first, not really first, but the, the row number one and column number one here, which is intersects right here. And so that's one case, but then also we don't really want to actually start at this position because in this position, because we're saying, okay, we want to grab left or right, and we usually add whatever values to the left of us or above us, which is like infinity in this case. We don't want to grab either of those because then this will be marked as infinity. And so when three is comparing, okay, do I want infinity or infinity? It will also become infinity. 
So in the first cell, you almost want to skip adding the top or the left of it. You just want to keep the value one. It's only every case after that where you actually want to consider what's to the left of it, what's above it. And so we'll actually say, okay, if the row in the column is one at position one, then we're just going to skip it. And so we'll want to mark our DP array at that position as the corresponding cell in our grid. And so that way our DP array basically has this value on the first row and first column and the value one, but everything else will be infinity at the beginning. Okay, and so then what we're gonna do is say, okay, our DP array at this row and this particular column will be equal to our grid at this row and at this column, but because our grid will be not kind of starting at one by one, it starts at zero because it's kind of zero index because it doesn't have this additional layer that's surrounding it. So although this DP array is a four by four array, our existing grid that's passed to us is actually a, a three by three grid. And so we want to actually subtract this by one here. And then we add the minimum, and this is kind of picking, okay, do we want to grab what's to the left of us and what's above us? And so that is our, from our DP array, because it's what has the kind of infinity symbols. And it will be, okay, the row that is above us or do we want to grab the cell in the same row of us, but at the column that's behind us? Great. And so finally, then we just want to return the kind of bottom of our DP array. And so that will be this row, this column, and that will naturally be this particular cell here. So because we're kind of going from left to right, row by row, we're basically calculating this value, then this one, then this one. Then we're calculating, okay, this value, then this value, then this value. And that way we're always saying, okay, we're kind of aggregating this. So it's one and then four and then uh, five here. And then this is two. Then this one picks seven. And this one looks at these two and it picks like six. And so you're just kind of aggregating the minimum uh, running sum until you reach all the way here where you get seven. And so we want to return this particular cell, which is at this um, location. Oh, um, we're returning infinity by accident, so something's wrong here. Let's see, oh, I didn't mark this as negative one, which is kind of the value behind us. And something else, so, Go to one and then continue. Oh, so once again, because this is a three by three array, we want to start at kind of look because our DP array is a four by four and it's looking at a three by three grid, and then we want to actually check the kind of row zero column one for that kind of three by three grid. And so we have to naturally add an index in when we're adding this kind of buffer for those infinities around these edges. So we have to make it a one by one index here. So this should be fine now. And yeah, so basically the time and space complexity. So the space will be once again, n by n, because we are using this DP array and then the time complexity will also be n by n. And that's because, well, okay, you're gonna to have to travel through every single cell at most once. 
and the number of cells you're going to have is going to be equal to the number of rows times the number of columns that you have. So yeah, I hope that helped. Um, it's a great question to practice. And yeah, so good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Have a great day.